Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it a few minutes to wait for a couple more people to come. I'm gonna type in the chat as well in case everyone, um, I'm sure you guys can all hear me, but um, I thought I'd type it for any one who's coming a bit late. If you've got, um, I don't know if you read it on my um, my profile, maybe you wouldn't have because I didn't put it on the trickers one. If you wanna get some socks, and if you don't have two blocks, I know we've run out in the shop, they're coming, <laughs> but two dictionaries or two books, anything nice and high will be really helpful. So I'm just gonna type that in, grab some blocks and a pair of socks. Um, I'm sure you guys all have socks. <laughs> And I'm just going to wait another minute or so before we fully begin. I'm just going to faff around with playing with the light, making it all good for you. Okay. So for those that are waiting, we'll just give it again like a few, a little bit more, waiting for more people to join in. We'll give it another 30 seconds. So again, if you want to grab blocks and a pair of socks, <laughs> if you don't have a pair of socks handy, um, maybe they're all in the wash, you could uh, grab a tea towel. So we're basically just going to use the socks to slide around on the floor later. Um, for those who have carpet, um, you might not need to worry too much about having socks and we'll kind of figure out a way for you to smoosh your feet wider when we come to that part rather than sliding around because not you know I've, I've, some people some people have carpet all right i'm just going to check everything's on right <laughs> okay so we're going to make a start hello everyone slightly different room aspect today. <laughs> it's funny finding so many different spaces to do stuff in from your house, like constantly reinventing, not quite the wheel, but your house. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to work a little bit into the splits. And so we'll be exploring front splits, this guy, and then also the side splits this way. Um, and gently, well, gently, not maybe some, not quite so gently, warming up uh, side of the body, the core a little bit to keep us held upright, and also the adductor muscles on the inside of um, the thighs, and also the front points of the hips, which we'll kind of play around and see what happens, especially in the front splits, um, when we've got quite tight hips, which I do even, you might not believe me, I, I kind of do. So I personally find the side splits easier to do than the front ones. Um, but I found doing these prep postures um, and giving it time. So again, just always need to warm up the body. We don't want to pull anything um, or overdo it beyond our limitation, right? So uh, again, I'm going to reiterate, I'm not promising you the splits in 60 minutes. <laughs> But um, hopefully some of these warm-ups will kind of, if you, if you, you know, do them regularly, it will sort of loosen up the correct, correct areas for you to be able to get into it a little bit easier. Maybe. Like being able to touch the floor, you kind of want to practice it as much as possible and then you'll get there. Okay, so let's begin. Again, if you've got socks, keep them next to you and two blocks or two books would be really great. Okay, so we're gonna work first into the front splits and we're just gonna do a few sun salutes to warm up and we'll dive actually straight into variations of sun salutation B and then start working on little preps to lengthen out the front and the, and the whole back, back of the leg to, to get us ready into the front split. So if everyone comes up to the top of our mat, I've also changed this class so it's 60 minutes because we tried 40 last week and it was definitely <laughs> um, definitely too 
I'm just going to put the phone on everything mode. Um, it's definitely too quick and we overshot anyway. All right, so to the front of our mat. Just wriggle yourself nice and tall. <sighs> and just give yourself a little space. Sometimes, you know, lighting that candle, or even like if you didn't have time to do that, to just take a bit of a breather, just a few breaths. Oh, <sighs> exhale out through the mouth and mentally creating a little bit of space for yourself, even telling yourself, all right, for the next 60 minutes, I'm, I'm going to take some time just for myself. Nice, and we're gonna squat all the way low, and I want you to try and work into the ankles here. So lean forward on the toes, lean back in the heels, forward, back, forward, back, all the way down. Try and touch the floor with the fingers, coming up into your chair pose, and exhaling full. So for the first one, we're just gonna take it really slow. So wriggle around, walk the back of the heels out. So for those that haven't practiced yet, today you may find yourself a little bit tight. So just walk it out, give yourself time. And then stepping one foot back. So hold it there, whichever foot you've stepped back. I just want you to slowly slide the hips down for a second. And notice actually, if you send your right hip forward, we're gonna try to send the left hip a little bit more forward. Or maybe you even just rock from side to side. And then other foot back and we're gonna lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward dog, and exhaling, downward dog. Stretching out the back of the legs, and from last week's class, remembering, feel free to wriggle around. Feel free to keep the knees bent and try and work into the armpits, and then work the legs. Give it just a little bit of time. And now looking forward, let's creep that right foot forward. So even if you wriggle, 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 right foot forward. Keeping that back heel up this time, rather than placing it down, we're going to sink the hips low before we move. So before we move up, think again, left hip to slide forward, right hip to slide back. And maybe just kind of bounce a little here, left hip forward, right hip back, push into the heel, push into the front foot, left forward, right back, sink low into the hips. And we're going to come up. Keeping those hips low, keeping that left hip forward, bring the hands down, step the foot back, lowering down, inhaling cobra or upward dog, <laughs> hello Bonnie, exhaling downward dog, and sending the left foot forward or wriggle it forward, and again take your time, sinking on low, kind of moving the hips, sending the right hip forward, left back, right forward, left back. And kind of start to get used to that motion of taking this left side, which kind of genuine, generally wants to come forward. I'm going to pull him back more and give the right side a little bit more attention, squaring off the hips in a way, feeling that happening. Pushing through that back heel, keep that right hip forward, left hip back, nice and low in the hips, strong legs, keep low in the hips and lift on up. Bring the hands down, send the feet back, lowering down, inhaling, <laughs> Bonnie's staring at me, and exhale, downward dog, he's so confused, and then stretching out the back of the legs. So if it helps you, definitely pedal the feet out. Or sway the hips left to right. Nice. And then walk the feet all the way to the front. Nice and slow. Hands on the shins on the floor. Lengthen that chest forward and send the sit bones high if possible, right? Imagine there's a band from your sit bones all the way to the heels. And you're going to stretch that band as much as it feels okay for you to do. Dropping that head down and then bring the hands up and then sit yourself down. And again, rocking back and forth into the heels, into the toes, into the heels, into the toes. We're going to dive all the way in into the second one, into your forward fold. 
Head up to lengthen. This time stepping the right foot back. Was that right? <laughs> the one you haven't done. <laughs> and then giving it some time to send the hip back. And one hip forward. So the one with the extended leg. The hip with the extended leg behind you. We're trying to sink it forward. And really feel it. You should be feeling it about here. In the lower side of the hip. The, the side that's stretching. <laughs> Nice, and take the other leg back and let's lower down. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, and down. Take a few breaths, lengthen out the back of the legs. Now step that right foot forward or creep it forward. And again, same thing, we're going to take that time to sort of get into our body, into our heads, about this hip, the longer one, the left side, pulling forward and down. Forward and down as the right side moves back and down. <laughs> back and down on the right, forward and down on the left. Push into the heel, okay? So your thighs feel firm, especially on this left leg. Stay low in the hips, and you're gonna lift on up with the hands. Bring the hands down, legs to the back, and low. Moving through your upward dog, moving through your downward dog, left foot forward, and then drop the hips. And again, just have a little smooch around on the hips, sending that right forward, left back. And so this is sort of the position of the hips that we're looking to find when we do our front splits. Sending that right hip forward, if let's say that left foot is the leading leg. So quite kind of having the space under us to get used to that is quite important, especially now we've got structure and help from our hands and our feet rather than later. <laughs> okay, sinking that hip low, push into the heel, strong thigh on that right leg, keep it low, push into the heel, lift the hands, bring the hands down, step the foot back and lower down. Inhaling, upward facing, exhaling, and down. Okay, staying here for five breaths. Walking the heels up. Letting the head hang down. So we had a question last week that I, that I didn't manage to answer about sun salutations. Where should your gaze be for your downward dog? If possible, gaze to your navel. Really stretching the whole back line of the body by allowing the head to really also keep going with the back line of the body. Stretch looking to your navel. Look to the front step, the feet forward, hands on the floor, on the shins, lengthen, and then take some time again. See if you can pull the sit bones higher behind you. Taking a form, coming all the way up, hands up. And again, we're gonna sink into it, bending the knees, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. One last little warm up all the way down. Lengthen the chest, step either one back, both lower, inhaling, upward facing, exhaling, down, send that right foot forward, sink the hips, left to squeeze forward, left to squeeze forward, keep this one really low, lift the hands, hands down, lower, up and down. Take the left foot forward. Sink the right hip low and to the front. Keep this low. Bring the hands up. Hands down. Step back low. Up and down. Breathing. Looking to the front, stepping the feet forward, lengthen the chest, exhaling and fold. Nice, and we're gonna heel toe the feet as wide as the hips, holding the elbows and just give this a little bit more so the weight of the body kind of rolls down. Keep
keep on thinking about sending the sit bones higher behind you. If there was a wall behind you, see if you can slide the bum up the wall. Let the head hang. Nice, and then just release the hands. We're gonna come to the floor, okay? Palms down, and then settle yourself all the way down towards the floor. Okay, I hope you're warmed up. I am, I'm quite sweaty right now. So we're gonna further now stretch the front of the legs, taking that right leg back. If you need to sit on a pillow, okay? And see if you can kind of squash the hips down towards the floor. Bring this right, uh, left foot up, and you can put it anywhere like further to the left or on the mat, starting to lean back. So you may find at this point, it might be quite nice to tuck the bum under a little bit, give your lower back some space. And I just want you to slowly head into a position where if you've gone backwards, your knee doesn't come up, okay? So for me, I'm actually pretty, pretty tight through the front of the leg. So if I lie down right now, my knee comes up. So try and find your position where it works for you. You've kind of got yourself held. This leg can relax down and kind of be quite a dead weight forward. As you just give this time to gain some length. So it should already feel less stiff than if we sort of jumped in off the bat and did this, just because we've done some, some quite active dynamic warm-ups. Give this a few more breaths. And actually, if you find it's a little bit uh, interesting of a sensation having the top of the foot on the floor, we will kind of need to get used to this a little bit. So pad it with maybe another blanket or a mat, but when we do the splits, this, this sort of will happen <laughs> on the floor. Sometimes just getting used to it a little bit. Okay, releasing, take the foot out, come and sit up again. Simply do the other side. So I'm just going to turn this way, taking the left leg back, rolling the calf out, and then sit on down. And same thing, as you lean back, kind of find that position where this leg now can be a dead weight forward and down. And for some of you, you just might be up here, and that's okay. For some of you, you might go all the way to the floor. And so holding it there for a sec, I'm just going to grab my phone to make sure everyone in the house has their Wi-Fi off because I forgot to tell them. So you're going to hold that. Sorry, guys, <laughs> I forgot to say. Can everyone turn off their Wi-Fi? Um, <laughs> holding that for a little bit longer. I just don't want the stream to crash for you. <laughs> Okay, make sure the left side is nice and heavy. Okay, and then picking yourself back up. Nice, coming on to the hands. All right, and keeping the right foot forward, let's just work the left knee back. So at this point, if you need a bit of padding, double up your mat on the left knee or grab a, grab a blanket near you. But kind of, you'll slowly find yourself in the distance that is most suitable for you as we work through this, okay? Essentially, we're going to do a lot of this prep uh, through the class by moving through um, kind of uh, pulsating in between two, two postures. So for this, we're going to keep the hands forward, slide the hips forward, and again, it's quite tempting to let the right hip lead with the right foot forward, we're going to try our best at this point to pull the left hip forward and send the right hip back, right? Like we did in our warm-ups. So rather than lead this way, you're gonna squeeze the left forward. So again, the idea of squaring off the hips. All right, moving in between that, left hip forward, and then pulling it all the way back. I'm sure you guys have seen or done this before where you drop the head down over the right shin and see if we can pull the toes back towards the head. And then moving in between these two. So again, make sure when you come forward, you're pulling the left hip forward. Big difference there. And then moving back. So in your own pace, in your own time, 
just working in between these two. And remembering when we go forward, it's that left hip. We want to pull forward. And as we come back, pulling the toes back towards the head. All right, now we're going to swap sides. So coming to the front and just swapping the feet, right foot, uh, left foot forward this time, right knee back. And again, take a little bit of time to establish the right hip moving forward. And you may find actually one side of your hips is much easier than the other. Left hip back, right hip forward. Dropping the right hip, really squaring the hip, sending right hip to the front, feeling the stretch again, at the front, at the thighs, at the hip flexors, and then moving in between both, leaning back, pull the toes towards your head. Moving in between these two, and again, try not to just sink down and not pull the right hip, pull that right hip forward. Take it back. And kind of the momentum of this is up to you. Your hands can really move anywhere so that you feel most stable. I actually have a bruise at the back of my left heel, so this <laughs> is a little bit uncomfortable. But let's not forget that right hip, right? Slide it forward. Nice. Bring the hands back to the front and we'll move on to the next one. We've done a little bit of this in the sun salutations we did earlier. Let's go back to your downward dog. Pick the right foot and put it forward. And it's quite similar, sanding the hip forward as you, as you sort of bend into the knee, send the left hip forward. Okay, to take it back, just uh, you can actually do whatever works for you for your back heel. In fact, try not to turn the heel in. We're going to keep the heel pressing straight back behind us and then pull ourselves uh, down and pull the front toes towards your head. So really similar like being on the knees except on the feet. <laughs> Sliding left hip forward. Okay, and as you go back, don't turn the heel in. Keep it back behind you, back behind you, back behind you. Pull the right toes towards your head. Working through this. Don't forget, left hip forward. Okay, let's swap the legs to the front. Take the right leg back into your downward dog. You should feel they feel quite different at this point. Taking the left foot forward and then set yourself up again, sending right hip to slide forward, right hip to slide forward, and really sink that and play with that so you really get that feeling. And then keep the heel straight behind you so you're not pivoting the heel down. Lean back into the heel, pick up your left toes, pull the toes towards your head, drop the head down. And actually, if you find instead of pulsating too much in between both, that you find lingering in either one for a little bit longer, more effective for you, please do that instead. Right. Every body is different. Just tune in, figure out what your body is saying. Where does it feel? A little tight. Okay, and then back into your downward dog. And again, walk the heels up. How do your back of the legs feel now? Hopefully a little bit more looser and through the hip, hopefully, as well. So stepping the right foot forward, this time not so far forward, but halfway, kind of to the middle of your mat. Similar process, this time straightening the legs. So already you might find this a little bit tough, hands on the floor, and just pull yourself nice and long, nice and loose through the back. Okay, same thing with the hips. It's quite common that we let that right hip slide forward. We wanna take that left hip instead and try and pull it forward to square the hips. So what you get is a, like a scissoring feeling at the tops of the thighs, like they're kind of squeezing together. So let's try it um, kind of more open. So send the left hip back. Okay, we're gonna go instead for the left hip forward and feeling the tops of the thighs, whew, tongue twister, tops of the thighs, scissor together. And again, left hip back and let's go left hip forward, scissoring the legs. Okay, so keep this 
as much as we can. We're going to turn the left toes out a little. Keep the scissor of the thigh. So keep that left hip moving forward. We're going to bend into the left leg and drop the head down. Ooh, and then coming back up. Keep the left hip moving forward, bending at the ankle, bending at the knee, coming back up. And again. It's hard, isn't it, to keep that left hip forward and kind of working through this. So let's swap sides after one more. Hands to the front and just change up the feet. Right foot goes back, left goes forward, and again, take some time. So it's all in the little minor preparation details. They make a massive difference. So we're going to turn the right hip open. Now we're going to turn the right hip forward and feel the tops of the thigh scissors. So kind of feeling that motion, right hip open, right hip forward, right hip open, right hip forward. And again, right hip open, right hip forward. So the back toes are about two o'clock. You keep them planted down, keep the front leg straight and use your hands for Balance help, push, uh, sorry, bend into the right ankle, bend into the right knee, and then come back forward, straighten, bend into the right knee, and straighten twice more, bending into the right knee, and straighten, and bend, and straighten, nice, bring the hands to the front, let's move through vinyasa, legs back, lowering down. Okay, inhale up dog and take the knees off the floor. So work into stretching the hips down and forward and exhaling downward facing dog. And again, in your downward dog, just take a pause, checking in how does the legs feel? How does the front of the hips feel? Back of the legs, your glutes, maybe bum's a bit achy. <laughs> All right, from here, just come to a seated position. Nice. So we're not, we're gonna kind of work a little bit on the backs of the legs a tiny bit more and quite a nice <laughs> exercise. It depends how your back of the legs are. So we're gonna lie down. Okay, make sure I don't muffle my mic up for you. Lying down. Oh, a nice little break. <laughs> Picking up the right leg. And as we do this, we're trying not to let the hips fly open up to the sides too much. So we're keeping it relatively quite kind of square because that's how we will be when we are doing the front splits, okay? Picking this leg up. Holding uh, where, where works, Any, really anywhere that works for you. I'm just going to keep an eye on the leg. So the movement we're going to do, right, not letting the leg open to the side and do it to the side of the body, but quite forward. So if you're quite flexible, you'll get your thighs to your rib cage or your belly. Okay, if you're not, you might you might be sort of sort of here. Wherever you are, we're going to encourage pushing into the toes, straightening the leg, and then bending and squeezing close towards you. So see actually if you can hold the thigh really close to the body, as close as you can, and then working through pointing and straightening and squeezing it in. So again, we're not taking it to the side of the body, we're bringing it onto the body itself. Relax the shoulders and then straighten, point both toes, and bending, straightening. So you'll sort of find a good spot for you to hold the leg. It'll be quite different for different people. And we're doing this with the mind of keeping the hips pretty square so we're not opening the hips up to the right. And notice when you do this, it's kind of work the hamstring as we straighten, the thighs really need to do some work and they'll just naturally be doing it. I'm sure you can feel it. It's just good to note that nothing in the thigh is sort of not doing anything. And this will be the same when we try the front splits. Maybe one more. And then releasing. Oh, take a bit of a starfish break.
<laughs> then we're going to try the other side. So uh, left leg up and then just get yourself comfortable. Remembering we want the leg on the body or in line with the left side of the rib cage and not open to the side. Okay, and slowly working in. Again, you might be here. Again, same thing. You're just going to try and straighten as much as it is within your range. And try and keep it pretty linear. So your, your leg, like when you're standing, it's not kind of, it's not going to flop out to the side. We're keeping it like its position in standing. And if you can, pointing the toes while we do this. Just a few more. Okay, take a starfish break. <laughs> and then we're gonna roll ourselves all the way back up. Whee! How do your legs feel now? They should feel a little a little longer. Okay, or your books. Bring a, bring a whole stack of books with you if you need to. We're going to work with this to help prop the body up. So really it's it's a, essential in the only way that it makes it a little bit more comfortable. Um, so if you've got your blocks, use your blocks. If you've got books, which might be lower, also use them. It's just a little bit more height for the body. I find it more comfortable anyway. Okay, so we're slowly going to get into this position and kind of slowly work into this. And again, if you need padding under the knee, pop your sock under there for now. Okay, and slowly creeping into it. We're not really going into any full splits now. But we're working it so that that left hips with the right foot forward, the left hip slides forward as much as possible. Okay, and while you sort of play around with that left hip moving forward, you can play with the slight distance between the back knee and the front foot. And you can move your blocks. So it's kind of always better with the blocks kind of under the shoulders, making one line. It just helps prop you up. And again, some of you may be up here and just working with this variation. So do whatever works best for your body. If you've got to this point and your right hip has slid forward and your left has gone back, dial it back in. Let's get the structure of this right. The left hip wants to move forward. All right, left hip moving forward, right hip squeezing back and, it, and kind of playing with that distance as we go, okay. Use your blocks for help. <laughs> Keep dropping that left hip and just sit with it for a sec. Yeah. And keep wriggling if that helps. Left hip forward, left hip forward. And now we're gonna swap. Use your blocks, pull yourself up. Eee, take a little break. <laughs> and then we're going with the left foot forward, right leg back. So again, please work to your honest <laughs> understanding of your own body. Don't push yourself. Ease into it slowly. If you've hit a limit, it's fine, it's okay. These things take so long and it's good to just explore your where you are now. All right, and know, yeah, we've all got limits, so don't push them and that's okay. All right, so don't go too far. If it's not for you today, it's not for you. So for this side, you're working right hip forward, left hip back. Right hip forward, left hip back. Pick a position. Use your hands even to just like push the blocks, lift the body up and sink into it. Nice. A little bit longer. And then hands on the blocks, lift yourself up, just step the foot back, Oy, take a breather. <laughs> nice. And then just come down to the knees. All right, at this point, we're going to put the socks on. Um, yeah, let's, let's, go, let's go with the socks now. If you haven't got your socks, maybe you can pause the video, go and grab some socks, and then join us back here in... 30 seconds. Okay. 
if you don't have if you have carpet on the floor, I'll kind of talk through what you do. So for those that can slide around on the floor, we're just going to roll up the mat from the front and from the back to create a little, little cushion for our bums in the middle. All right, very similar thing as before. We're going to play with a slide. So using the blocks for help. Similar thing, right foot forward. We're working that left hip forward as well to join it. Use the blocks to support the body. Sliding. And then take it back. And again, sliding. If you can, maybe, oops, your bum starts to sit on your mat. And remember, if that right leg wants to go all the way more forward, don't let it really try and drop the left hip down. Okay, pull it back, slide the foot, and let's try the other side. Take the toes in the front, slide. So for those trying this other side, right hip moves forward. If you've got a carpet, you don't need socks. <laughs> You're gonna do that same creeping method as before, but it might be quite nice to roll up your mat anyway. So you got a little bit of height under you to sink your hips down to. So you might find for some of you, it's better to have the back toes tucked. For some of you, it might not. And feel free to switch sides whenever you want, playing with the slide, using your blocks for your support. And remembering the hips, so rather than letting that back hip open, you're trying to slide it forward. Okay, for those who are in it, let's say you sort of work the hips, you'll feel it actually. If your hips are lopsided, your chest will start to want to face the right hand side if your left leg's forward. So you're going to try and squeeze everything so your shoulders and chest is facing the front, maybe playing with letting go, pointing through both toes, squeezing that right hip to the front or the back leg hip. Okay, playing one more time with the other side. And again, wherever you are, it may be that you're not doing the full splits today. You're just going to work on dropping that back foot hip forward. So I can demo it better on this side because you can actually see. Rather than this, with the hips lopsided. And you can see my body will naturally want to face this way because this is sort of open. I'm really trying to work this left hip, the back foot hip, to the front like how we do in pigeon squaring off the hips okay and then getting kind of come kind of comfy and as you square off the hips you'll feel the shoulders will naturally want to pull to the front maybe you can let go playing with some arm variations and then everyone let's take a break slide back up Drop yourself into any pancake, forward fold, flop, down. And then knees on the floor, <laughs> move the blocks away. And if you had your mat rolled up, let's unroll the mat. So I'm aware I'm going quite fast because I'm trying to get quite a lot in. So if any time you need more time to play with something, please just hit pause um, on the video and then you can kind of go through it again. Okay. I kind of hope that was helpful. I know it's quite a lot to ask to do so, to kind of condense quite a lot to get you to front split in like 35 minutes. Um, but I hope you found that helpful and maybe a little bit uh, looser. You might be a tiny bit achy at the front of the hips uh, today and tomorrow. <laughs> um, but those things I find really helpful in learning how to, you know, get, get the right alignment for the front splits. So I'm gonna work a little into um, releasing and lengthening and being aware of our adductor muscles, so the, the things that add, bring the body into the central line. In the inner thighs. Okay, so coming on to some bring my notes here. Coming on to your bum. Nice break as well, this one. Baddha Konasana. So let's go with the feet quite far forward to start. We're gonna shuffle the bum back. 
Shuffle, shuffle. And as you do that, your front, your, your front body, your body should be dropping forward. So keep shuffling the bum back so your body drops forward. And then just drop it down. So whether this is you, or this is you, or you're here, just kind of let that hang happen. Loosen off the inner thighs, the inner hips. And then pick yourself back up. Nice stuff. So bring it in a little bit more. If you find that you bring it in too close and you start rounding the spine, take it back forward. And we just want to get to a place where if you've brought the feet forward, you can still shuffle the bum like you're sticking your bum out behind you. And then never use your elbows to shove the thighs open. We just want this to happen quite naturally without extra force, even from yourself. All right, just folding down and just noticing, never push past any pain. If it's uncomfortable, just ease off. Right? Every day our body will throw up something else, what we've eaten the day before, not actually throw up. <laughs> Hopefully not. Nobody's throwing up. <laughs> Bringing up. Oh, no, that's not any better. Uh, but it'll have different aches, different wants, different ways. It's kind of being filled and acting, depending on our mornings, the month, the year. So just take whatever comes and don't force it. Nice. And we're going to come back up. And so again, we're going to play with quite a backward and forward motion. Hopefully you found that quite helpful. So um, for this one, we're going to be rolling a little bit over the toes. So for those that have sensitive toes, if you grab a blanket and kind of put it where your feet might be, that might be helpful. You can also keep your socks on if you've got them. All right, we're going to, how should we, how should we do this one? Going to... Yes, okay, come to the back of your mat and come onto your toes. So your left toes are two o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock and your 10 o'clock and your right toes are two o'clock. Essentially, your feet are doing this. <laughs> I made that more complicated than I needed to be. The heels are somewhat together, but it doesn't quite matter. Just working to open the inner thighs. So bring the hands forward and again, slide your bum and hips back. Okay, we're going to move in between this position and then coming forward, knees down, and we're keeping the diamond shape behind us. Maybe the soles of the feet kind of start to touch, maybe leaning forward, hips forward and down, and then back onto the toes, push back, knees open, bum down, and then come forward, knees down. Lean the hips forward and then keep kind of moving in between these things. So if you find your knees are hitting the floor and you kind of want more padding under the knees, maybe get another blanket. And if you've come forward and this happens, the feet come off the floor, that's okay. Just working into the hips. Hmm. Hopefully this feels nice and not awful. And again, don't work too hard past your limitations. These limitations doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Just what it is. It's just where we're at. Okay, bring the knees together, pop them down, and let's sit on the feet for a second. So I find that quite effective. I don't know how you're feeling about it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that one. Okay, so now this time, uh, let's move your extra blanket, and we're going to slowly make our way. Mm, let's go for this one first. So the feet nice and wide, like, like a... Malasana, which we'll get to in a second. We're going to use all the floor and our hands to help us for this. So I'll do a few variations. Toes again, 10 and 2 o'clock, all the way to the right. And you may find some of you 
come to the right and the heel comes up. That's okay. And then moving to the left. So as we move left and right, let's say if you've gone over to the right foot with the right knee bent, let's see if we can flick up the left toes. And keep your hands on the floor so you can really use the floor for help. Really navigate around like you're doing slow Kung Fu on the floor. Left toe up as you move to the right. As you move to the left, see if you can stretch the right toes up towards your body. Okay, another variation to do this is to do it without your hands. So if you wanna try, please go for it. You can put the hands to the front. You can make grand gestures <laughs> like you're doing Kung Fu. <laughs> but as you come down onto the other side, don't forget to pull the toes back towards the body. Woof, and don't slide. <laughs> nice. Okay, and then let's lift the bum, heel toe the feet. Ooh, just a little bit wider than the hips. And again, toes, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Use the hands on the floor and then shuffle the bum down. So it's quite nice to sway into it. That was quite intense. Maybe rocking to the toes, rocking to the bum a second. And for those that have the heels up, I will highly recommend you grab a pillow. Again, pause it if you need to. Grab two pillows. And you're going to put the pillows under the heels because what we want to do is make sure the weight isn't squeezed forward so that these guys are gripping, but we, the inner hips, um, but we want to drop down so that you can rest the weight onto the bum, onto the heels, so the hips can sort of have their attention. So for some of you, you may be down here using the floor for help. Please do the floor, so helpful. Or for some of you, you're drawing yourself up tall, right, and this will kind of slowly happen. You can kind of bounce around even. You're just allowing the weight of the bum to, to really just drive downwards and feel heavy. So you're really not squeezing or trying to lift up the pelvis or the hips whatsoever, letting the weight of the hips anchor the back of the body. Okay, we're gonna take a little, little break here. So come down onto the knees and we're just gonna sit on the heels a second. Whee! Maybe it might be quite nice to lean back, shift the bum a little bit more under and just lift the hips up, stretching out the front of the hips. It's quite intense, isn't it? And then, and then come back down. Okay, so hands back on the floor, back into your malasana position. Keep the body nice and down if you want. And this time we're gonna take all the weight to the right hand side. So again, if you need to just move your whole body, bring the, the hands to the right, the body to the right, and then slowly sliding, so the socks might be helpful, sliding the heel of the left foot out. Slide the heel of the left foot out. Use the floor for help. Go really low if you need to. And then we're gonna drop the bum to the floor. So if you're on your heels, uh, sorry, if you're on your toes on the right foot, this might be a little bit more difficult. I would again, highly recommend you try and use something under the heel so you can drop the weight down on it, which is pretty helpful and quite, quite key so you're not just kind of squeezing again in the adductors we're trying to get them wide and loose okay so for those that are here maybe your hands on the floor maybe you're set up I want you to try and sit the bum down okay and we're going to move in between both so again pause it if you need something under your heel so you can go and get um something to, to roll under there so you can put the weight down and also if you need the floor please do. We're going to move between these two movements. I'm going to do hands on the floor first. Lift the bum up, drop the bum down. I can do it without. Let's go, um, let's go genie hands. Lift the bum up and put it back down. <laughs> Lift the bum up, put it back down, and you'll really feel it in sort of the rotation in the muscles here of the, the, the leg so socket 
going in the hip socket <laughs> and the leg bone. Okay, and kind of working through that. Now the side splits have a lot to do with healthy hip rotation. All right, so strengthening, lengthening, both at the same time, and mainly just finding the, the motor control of all the little muscles in this quite in this in this um quite complex ball and socket joint with lots of innovations in them. So up and down, hands, no hands, whatever works. And then let's take a break. Hands to the front. We bring the knees together. Ooh, sit them together. Hands to the back. If you found this quite nice, maybe do this one again. And then dropping down. Other side. Sometimes you're like, why do I have two sides? <laughs> that was intense enough on one side. Okay, so again, malasana. Hands to the front. Body to the left, body to the left, get something under the heel if you need, and slide the right foot out. Slide the right foot up. And then hands or no hands, thing under the heel or not, playing with, sitting down, picking it up. Sitting down, picking it up, and keep going. Genie hands if you want. You nod every time. <laughs> and again, you're just playing with this feeling in the hip. If anything is too much, just take a break. Next one might be a bit much. So if you need a break at any point uh, in this class, please take it. You can always resume later or do it again later in the day. Okay, time for a break again soon. Bring the hands to the floor. Squeeze it, knees together. Sitting on the heels, hands to the back. Tuck the bum under. Maybe just kind of wriggle up the hips a little. Okay. Next little guy is frog. Highly recommend, um, even if you have quite sturdy knees, uh, which I do, not much of a sturdy eye. I don't know if you can see I've got a cut. But anyway, um, you want to bring uh, something cush cushiony for your knees, okay? We are going to go for frog. <laughs> so what we want to make sure, I'm actually going to do it from the side, even though it <laughs> looks interesting, um, is to ensure as we slide... Uh, my blanket's not enough for my knees anyway, that we don't want the hips to go much forward, like in a diamond shape, than the, than the knees. And we also don't want to sink it too much back. What we want to try and find is for the hips to be kind of in line with the knees. So just have a look. Okay, and if you can, literally like a frog, <laughs> the the angle between the calf and the thigh to be about 90 degrees, okay? And from this, when we go when we go down, we're not kind of sliding the hips forward, we're seeing if the knees can slide more open to the side. So you may find this is enough, and you just wanna hold it here. Again, we're not gonna force it, choosing kind of where works for you, and adopt a little, like a very yin-like approach to, Doing this, <laughs> clear the head. No, so you don't have to clear the head, <laughs> but try and relax into it. So we're not gripping um, the bum and gripping the inner thighs. We just want to relax into it. Sometimes rocking helps a little. You know, it looks quite funny, um, but rocking does help just to relax the belly down, relax the knees open, and you're just working with gravity on this. Some of you may be quite high, in which case, maybe you're higher up, just use your hands for help. We can bring the blocks under you so to get a little bit more height. Okay, this is um, the slightly tricky bit. I'm just going to decide which one I'm going to do. I think we're going to do this one instead of the one I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, so. We're essentially going to try one side of a side split here. Why not? We're kind of halfway, well, we're, we're pretty much in it right now. So with your 
left leg. So you may want to, for your joints sake, to just pick yourself up and ease off a little bit. Use your hands for help. Just shift around, make sure your hips are okay. And then you're gonna slide one leg straight and slide it back. It can feel quite intense. So you can move the body like how we did in Malasana, right? If you wanna straighten one leg, move the body the other way and then take it back. So playing with that, straighten. And again, it might feel really quite weird in your hips, so just be careful, know your limitations. If that is too much to do, you're gonna stay low and just sit with your frog, your body frog, not your pet frog. Although if you have a pet frog, that's very cute. Together, frogs. <laughs> okay, if you're playing with that version, you can try and straighten. And notice as you straighten, you it actually helps to sink into the opposing hip. It's pretty intense. Get a little bit more padding under the knees if you need to. Okay. Hands under the belly, pick yourself up. We're gonna come out of this nice and slow. Lift the hips, squeeze the knees together, bring everything together. Whee! When I do that, I sort of feel a bit like a spatched cock chicken. Ready for the oven. <laughs> so squeezing it all back together. Oi, bring the hands behind you bum tucks under, and then just kind of, again, ease off the hips, up and forward a little. We're nearly there, <laughs> okay. So, let's come onto our mats. So we don't need the extra blanket. You can if you do. Um, keep the blocks in front of you because you might find this helpful but I'm gonna just move it away so you can have a look at the hips and I might turn to the side. So again, we can have a look at what we're doing. So firstly, we're not gonna go to the max like what we did in frog, just coming to wide legs and again, playing with that hip tilt. Okay, so some of you may find it's easier with, well, fluffy legs, with the legs, with the knees bent a little bit and you're working with tipping the pubic bone forward and then rounding up the spine. Same thing, tipping pubic bone forward if the legs are straight and rounding back. And again, it's all about creating quite a healthy range of motion between the ball and so in the ball and socket joint here in the hips. Okay, and I'm gonna do it with maybe, I'm just gonna put them there just in case we need the blocks. All right, so for some of you with the bent knees, you might be slowly working on straightening one leg and keeping upright, rather than tipping to the back. As you straighten one leg into your side split, you're working on that tipping forward of the hips to the pubic bone moving down, and then hands to let go. All right, nice steady core to lift yourself up. For those that are kind of here and able to tip the pubic bone forward, maybe we don't need blocks. At this time, you can see if you can shuffle the pubic bone even more forward. So you can see the tip of the pelvis really rolls forward, 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 and again, roll it forward, 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 and then upright. So you're turning like an Allen key. As you turn forward, the toes, Move forward, I hope you can see that. If not, I'll do it at a different angle as well. And as you come up now, you're turning the whole leg, like the Allen key, bringing the torso with you, toes to face up, and hands to balance, or hold yourself upright somehow. Okay, take a break, and we'll try that one more time. So I'll do it from this angle, yeah. So you can have a look at the toes. So again, let's say you're here with bent knees, and you're working on the hip tilt. You're trying to work on tilting the hips forward, pubic bone pressing towards the floor, and then straightening that leg and trying to keep this upright motion. And you'll really feel it in the hips. This will be your side split today. And for those that are here with quite a V, maybe quite a big V, 
You can take the hands forward, keep tipping the hips forward, keep tipping the pubic bone forward and slide open. That similar sensation as you got in your frog. Okay, and then there's sort of a turning Allen key effect. The toes are now sort of pointing down because they've pushed the pubic bone down. All right, we're gonna take this whole thing. As the toes move up, it's gonna kind of crank and guide everything to turn up with it. It's all really active through my adductors, which are hopefully long and strong. My thighs are working, core is working, everything is really holding me upright. So wherever you are, just taking your few breaths, you can even just use your hands on the floor for some support. And you can play with pointing the toes, flexing it back. Try not to drop it forward, keep it upright. Okay, bending the knees one at a time. Squash them all together. <laughs> and then curl yourself into a ball. This is probably the, the nicest thing to do after splits. Staying huddled in a little ball. Maybe going into child's pose for a second. So everyone coming to their mats, dropping the head down. So child's pose has many arm variations. Basically, do the arm variation that is the most comfortable for you. Whatever that looks like. So after opening up the hips loads, it's quite nice to just be a little hedgehog. Let the head hang, the whole body relax. Feel free to squidge left and right a little bit. And let's take 30 seconds on our backs. So everyone just lump over on your backs. Lie yourself down. This might be quite nice to do now rather than lying flat as we've opened our hips so much is to bring the feet on the mat and let the knees drop in. Hands can go anywhere that's comfortable. And just as we lie here for a second, just to regroup. Just notice how your hips feel. How your body feels, your mind. Nice little snapshot of this afternoon. <sighs> Exhale to relax the breath a few times. Relax the body. Stay for longer if you have a longer break in the day. If you'd like to move again, squeeze the knees up to the chest and just hug it nice and tight again, just getting a bit of uh, closure, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Rolling on to one side. And then pushing yourself up. Let's keep the knees together. <laughs> I don't know about anyone, my hips feel like they could fly out the door. Bring the palms in prayer. Now let's arm to close. Inhaling. Om. Oh. 
Namaste. Thank you so much. Any questions, type them down, or you can send it in email or on our socials. But yeah, I hope you found that helpful. I literally feel like I need to keep my legs together now because I feel so loose. <laughs> um, but I hope you found that helpful. Uh, yeah, they're, they're quite effective little things to work on. If you got stuck on any of them, that's okay. That, that can be a stopping point. Um, I'm just going to come to the computer to see if you guys are done. <laughs> Nice. So if you have any comments, I'm just going to leave this running. Oh, thanks, Pete. <laughs> it is, isn't it? But it's really, did you find it effect? Did you find it effective? So Pete just said that was intense. Um, thanks, Gemma and Mara. It's helpful. Oh, next week, I forgot to say, we are working with forward folds and the mechanics and the techniques behind folding, what we need to release and fold, wide legs, seated, lying down. Yeah, I know, on my hips. <laughs> so maybe if you want, um, maybe for some counter postures before you kind of go out into the world, uh, well, into the house, not the world, don't go into the world. Um, maybe just keep the legs together. <laughs> <laughs> do some uh, navasanas bring it all back in um yeah but it's really intense so um we tend to store a lot of stress in our hips and also from the way we sit down on the on chairs and stuff it's it's just it's it's so intense because the, there's so much um there's so many different muscles that cross the intersection of the hip joint um and and you can imagine just to stabilize, to stabilize the hips. So it's actually just kind of asking them to all slowly move. I think that, I mean, it's that, that's why it feels so, so intense. Um, sweet. I'm glad you enjoyed that. So next week, forward falls of all sorts. Um, yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying these classes. Any questions again, just, Type them in to us on email or on Instagram or on Facebook. All right. Bye. <laughs> Signing out. Peace.